Thank you, uh, Gordon, for that very kind introduction and for having me here today. I, of course, do want to acknowledge and pay my respects to the elders of the uh, traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, and also acknowledge all of the many very distinguished guests that we have today who have all been uh, acknowledged individually, so I will save time by not doing that again. But it is so great to have such a diversity of distinguished guests, both politically and from defence, here with us today. It's my pleasure to introduce today's final afternoon session, and this afternoon has quite a specific Western Australian flavour to it. Now, that's not just because our nation's defence minister, defence industry minister, and myself as the defence shadow minister for defence industry all hail from Western Australia, but it certainly helps. Uh, obviously, we're also here in Perth. Crucially, Perth is not only the Western gateway to Australia, but it is Australia's gateway to the Indo in the Indo-Pacific. We are, after all, Australia's GMT plus eight capital. This places Western Australia in a unique position for Australian defence and defence industry. And this is not just because WA is the location of the only Five Eyes naval base that can provide sustainment support that is not the subject of a sovereignty dispute or bordering the South China Sea. But it's also due to our capacity to take advantage of the highly relevant technology and skills where Western Australia is already a global leader in mining oil and gas, especially in the areas of subsea communication, remote operation and indeed automation. It is striking good fortune then that as well as holding that shadow defence industry portfolio, I am also Labor's shadow minister for WA Resources, as well as assisting in small and family business. Because, of course, SMEs, family businesses, are crucial to this defence industry journey. Earlier today, we heard from Darrell about the estimated 150 small businesses based around the Australian Marine Complex in Henderson, most of which are integrated into our defence programs and generating more than 2,000 jobs in Western Australia, all with the potential for even further growth. Making sure that WA is best placed to take advantage of this potential for future growth, that skilled workforces can not only be delivered but kept available to meet ongoing defence needs and that the right facilities are available to reach this potential is vital. To this end, coming up, we have a presentation on future skills for the Defence Force in Western Australia from Ian Irving, the CEO of Naval Shipbuilding College. We then have a panel discussion on preparing WA to meet new and emerging Indo-Pacific defence requirements, with panellists not only from WA's own US naval shipbuilder, but also my local TAFE, who are introducing new and innovative courses in both naval shipbuilding and automation in the resources industry, as well as from the new WA Defence Science Centre and Black Tree Technology. Following on, of course, we'll then have our keynote address for the afternoon from former commander of the US Cyber Command and director of National Security Agency, retired Admiral Mike Rogers. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike at the Australian-American Leadership Dialogue dinner on Friday night, and I know his address today will be most valuable. Now, cyber security is a booming industry, and it's expected that by 2020, there will be a global shortfall of more than 1.5 million cybersecurity professionals. That all seems to be heading in the wrong direction. By the way, Mike, uh, I'm visiting the headquarters of the Cybersecurity Cooperative Research Centre at Edith Cowan University tomorrow, so if you have any pointers on curly questions that I can ask them, I'd appreciate it if you could pass them on to me. Now, we will uh, be rounding off the day from my counterpart, the Federal Minister for Defence Industry, the Honourable Melissa Price, and then some closing remarks from our own Western Australian Minister for Defence in Issues, Paul Papalia, who I have no doubt will add to the insights for their WA's agenda for the expansion of defence industry, uh, building on that rather subtle video that we had earlier today. Then it is uh, my great pleasure to urge you to stick around for, more, for some drinks and some critically more networking. Uh, but, of course, I would like to also to invite you to use that time. I'm a new shadow minister. I'm the new shadow minister for defence industry. I'm not afraid to tell you that I don't actually know everything, and I'm eager to learn. So I do invite you to please come and say hi to me and make the most of that opportunity because I want to learn from everyone here today. And it's why it's important that the Perth US Asia Centre, with the support of the WA government, hold these events so that we can all learn from each other. 
But first up for this afternoon, in the final uh, session for the day, we have uh, the SME Showcase with Tony Rutledge, the CEO of AVI. Tony and his team have created for themselves a niche electronics business that has evolved into a trusted supplier of communications and security systems for military special purposes, which just highlights just one of the many examples in which our SMEs here in Australia and Western Australia are building a capable defence industry, but more importantly, developing that sovereign capability here in Australia as well. And I do see it critically as my role as a shadow defence industry minister to work with the government to make sure that we continue to see these businesses developing that sovereign defence capability here in Australia and making sure they prosper. So over to you.